and hello, my name is Emma, and today I'm going to be baking some fun fall festive treats while talking about my favorite things about this season. Today's video is going to be a little different. I looked up some delicious recipes that I'm really excited to try, and I'm just going to be talking about all the fall and Halloween themed things, like my past Halloween costumes, and what movies and TV shows and even books I like to read around this time of year. Before we dive in, I want to thank today's video sponsor, which is Cereal Box. Cereal Box is your portal to another world. They publish immersive story experiences through audiobook and ebook formats in genres like science fiction, fantasy, mystery thriller, historical, and horror. I say the audiobooks are immersive because they include background noises and sound effects and often have multiple different narrators in order to make the story come more alive and those are some of my favorite elements when listening to audiobooks. You can always read or listen to the first episode of a series totally for free to make sure you like it before you buy it, but one of my favorite things about Cereal Box, which I think is so cool, is that because you get both for the same price, you can swap easily between different formats so you can be reading your story one day and pick it up with the audiobook in the same spot later. A lot of the series available right now on Cereal Box actually feature stories and characters that are really famous like Marvel's Avengers, such as Black Panther, Tatiana Maslany from Orphan Black, which I love, and even David Tennant as the 10th Doctor. The chapters and episodes are also shorter than typical books, which help keep you engaged without a huge commitment. One of the newest titles available now on Serial Box is called The Haunting of Beatrix Green. It is written by Rachel Hawkins, whom I have read from and enjoyed in the past, along with Ash Parsons and Vicki Alvier Schechter. It follows a savvy medium who is tasked with outsmarting a scientist whose job is to expose supernatural frauds, and the two of them must join forces in order to stop a ghost that is vengeful and intent on creating harm that they have conjured together. It features an independent female lead living in Victorian London and features lots of seances, possessions, and secrets. You can check out the first episode of the story available on Serial Box now, and the rest of the episodes will be released weekly starting October 28th. Serial Box seems like a super innovative way to experience new stories, so if you are interested, you can actually get your own first Serial Box story using my code at the link in the description. I really feel like this is an awesome service a lot of you would enjoy and get a lot of use out of, so check them out, help support my channel. But without further ado, let's dive into the baking. So I've attempted baking a couple of times on my channel before and it's never really been disastrous so I'm feeling okay going into today's video. I am going to be attempting to make three different fall themed treats. So the first is going to be pumpkin pudding. The second is going to be apple cider donuts, which is definitely the most ambitious of the bunch. And for when all else fails, I picked up the Pillsbury cinnamon rolls because as I was looking up like fall treats and desserts to make, I saw people make cinnamon buns, but they use the icing drawn as a spider web. So this will be an easy one at the end. I will be leaving all of the links to the recipes that I used in the description because I'm not going to be really talking through them. I don't really have a plan for this video. I kind of just wanted to chat about some of the things I love about fall and Halloween and some like past memories. So first off, fall is my favorite season. I feel like it always has been even since I was a kid. As a kid, we went pumpkin picking a lot because there's a ton of farms on Long Island. And I also remember us just going to like fall festivals and fairs where you could check out different shops and there would be like hay rides or like jumping into hay and stuff. I went um, apple picking with a couple of friends a few years ago and that was super super fun. I don't think I had ever been apple picking before or at least not when I was like old enough to remember it. So that was a really great trip and like this weekend I'm going to a drive through haunted house with a couple of friends which should be really fun. So it's like a drive through experience due to the pandemic which should be fun. Okay, this pudding is starting to look really good and I'm actually very excited about it. So something else I wanted to talk about in this video was some like past year Halloween costumes. 
And as I've been brainstorming, I'm realizing that I feel like I don't have like many memorable costumes. I know as a kid, I went as Ginny Weasley, Hermione Granger, or like a generic Hogwarts student, like at least five times. It was like my staple comfort costume when I always had the merch to do it. So it always worked out for me and I feel like a lot of people can relate to that. And I also realized that maybe it's because like I never thought any of my costumes were like really amazing, but I don't have a lot of pictures either, which has been very disappointing. So I f remember in ninth grade, I went as like a gangster slash like mafia person. The unfortunate thing about that costume is I already owned that fedora and wore it unironically and not in costume <laughs> and then i think in 10th grade i went as barbie i do not think i was the greatest barbie in the world but i distinctly remember i wanted to be barbie because i watched a michelle fan youtube tutorial how like 2010 is that <laughs> but that costume was notable for me because when i got the wig for it i wanted to recreate a photo that I had seen on Tumblr a thousand times. So I did like my own version of it and uploaded it in my photo class for fun. And so my photo teacher ended up submitting it to the Scholastic Art and Writing Competition and I ended up being one of the winners of the top highest award, all because I took this like silly photo that I wanted to get reblogs on Tumblr for. Okay, I almost forgot what I was in 11th grade, but now I remember. So I'm gonna be very frank with you all. Before I was a booktuber, I was a huge music snob. Electronic music was my life. It was like my entire identity and had been for a very long time, and so, when I was in like 10th and 11th grade, it started receiving a lot more mainstream hype. And so as a music snob, that irritated me because like I was going to these shows for the music because I loved these artists and I loved this community. And of course I felt the need to gatekeep that because all these normies were coming in. I went as a fake raver. So like I dressed up in all neon and I wore my fluffies and I had like a pacifier around my neck and I thought I was like so quirky and like not like other rave girls. <laughs> Even though I totally was that rave girl, like I, I wore things I already had in my closet. I'm really glad that like I made peace with that and I no longer feel that way, but it was, it was a time and it was a choice and just, not my best Halloween costume. I loved my costume in 12th grade. I was really proud of it. It was like the first time I really put any effort into making my own costume. And of course it was super obscure and only one person at school recognized who I was and that made it all worth it. So as I'm talking about my love for electronic music, I was a huge fan and still am a huge fan of the group, oh my gosh, that was a lot of apple pie spies. <laughs> I'm a fan of a group called Major Lazer, and they make very interesting electronic music that has a lot of different influences, but their mascot is, is the mascot called Major Lazer? I think he's just called the Major Lazer mascot, but this is what he looks like. So I ended up being the Major Lazer mascot, and like I said, I was really proud of that costume. It was just a lot of fun to make, and I was really proud of it. So even though like it was really obscure and like not noticeable by anyone except for one person, I'm really proud of it. So in my college years, that's typically when like everyone goes all out for Halloween for like three weekends in a row. And I've mentioned before that I didn't have a huge social life during college. I was really invested in booktube and my booktube friends and I don't regret that. But it just makes me realize that I don't have a lot of memories of like dressing up and doing Halloween things. I do know my freshman year was when I was trying to be a little bit more social and every year my school has a Halloween party and I dressed up as like a, oh gosh, what is that artist's name? I don't wanna butcher it. Roy Lichtenstein. So I guess I went as like a Roy Lichtenstein character. So I had like a blue wig, a polka dot dress, and I had done my makeup like all the pop artists do. Sadly, I did not take a single picture, but if I'm honest, it wasn't that great, so you're not missing out on much by not seeing it. And so the only other time I think I remember dressing up in college, at least, that was memorable, 
was for a party that I went to at Michael Bookline, Kaylee Hyde, and Monica Kim's apartment when they all lived together in Brooklyn. It was a super fun time. I have very fond memories of that party. And I decided to go as Isabel Lightwood from Shadowhunters. You would think I had more Mortal Instruments characters on this costume list, right? But I've only ever dressed up as characters for videos. So rather than dressing up as her in like normal Shadowhunter gear, I really wanted to recreate the outfit in all white that she wears, I think in the pilot episode. It's like her pandemonium scene outfit where she had like the white wig on, but it was fun and it was something that like I would have worn, so I was really excited to do it. And so another time when I had dressed up was for a concert, as I was talking about before, but me and my ex were going and I decided that I wanted to dress up as like a skeleton. I really wanted to do like a cool skeleton makeup, so I followed a tutorial on YouTube, of course, and what I was really excited about was this like skeleton hand bra that I had made. I took like gloves that had had bones on them from like Party City and I put them on the bra and wore it under a fishnet shirt and it was really cool. Another costume that I had dressed up as maybe two years ago was um, me and my ex had gone as Boo and Sully from Monsters Inc which I thought was really cute. Oh no, I didn't add the apple cider. Went through all this effort to reduce this apple cider and I forgot to put it in and it's like the main ingredient. Mm, okay, regardless of how these cook, these are gonna be delicious. And so last year I got to do a costume that I had been wanting to do for a really long time, and that is Edgar Allan Poe. I have always been a big fan of Edgar Allan Poe, and I'm also a fan of sexy costumes, so it just felt perfect for me. So before I talk about what I'm dressing up as this year, I have to figure out how to turn this batter into donuts without a donut pan. So I saw this hack online that I'm not sure if it's gonna work, where I rolled up these little aluminum foil cylinders that I'm gonna put in the middle and put the donuts around. So, in a completely unsurprising turn of events, those little tinfoil things did not work, so they are officially just going to be apple cider muffins. <gasps> I knew that was coming! And I think we are done with cooking prep. So, as the second batch of apple cider muffins now are getting cooked, I'm going to make the toppings. So, if you watched a recent video on my channel called What We Watched in Quarantine, you will have met my boyfriend Jake. And if you watched that video, you would know that Jake and I recently watched all of Shit's Creek together. And so, because Jake and I love that show so much, and we both connect with two of the main characters so well, we are going as David and Alexis Rose from Schitt's Creek. The thing is, um, Jake and I don't actually have any plans. We don't have anywhere to go, so it might just turn into us dressed up, hanging out in his apartment, which we are both totally cool with. I wanted to recreate Alexis's look from the iconic A Little Bit Alexis scene. I am very much looking forward to dressing up. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna post pictures and it'll be a great time. So as we come to like the end of my costumes and what I have worn over the years, I would love to hear some of your costumes that you've dressed up as. Gotta say though guys, I am quite impressed with these muffins. They look delicious and I'm super excited to give them a try. Look at that, absolutely delightful. So I am virtually done with all of my baking and I'm really pleased with how everything turned out. Before I dig in, two things I have to do is I have to dress my pudding, so I'm gonna add some Cool Whip and a little bit more of the pumpkin pie spice on top. And then I have to draw these spider webs on the cinnamon buns. So I kind of just want to speed through this process really quickly so I can get to eating these delicious treats and talking about some of my favorite Halloween books and movies. <laughs>
so I probably could have waited longer for the rolls to cool before icing them because all of my work now just looks like I normally drizzled them, but I feel like you can tell that they're spider webs, right? Alrighty, so my treats are done and I'm ready to close out this video talking about some of my favorite spooky Halloween fall themed content I like to watch or read during this season. Let's try this pumpkin pudding. I think that is literally just a spoonful of Cool Whip. Mm, oh my gosh, that is so freaking good. Next, let's try my apple cider muffins. Mmm, wow. I gotta say, it tastes exactly like apple cider donuts, and I'm quite impressed with myself. And we have all had the Pillsbury cinnamon rolls. There's nothing new or innovative here, but delicious as always. I need napkins. <laughs> so my number one all-time favorite Halloween movie is always going to be Hocus Pocus. I have such distinct memories of watching it with my babysitter when I was very, very young and I've sort of grown up as Hocus Pocus being part of like my Halloween life. And it still holds up over the years. It is just so atmospheric and guaranteed to always put you in that Halloween mood, but it is also hilarious. Like the humor in this movie, especially from the Sanderson sisters, is A+. If you didn't know, there was a book published called Hocus Pocus the Sequel, I believe, and it was kind of like a YA novelization of the film Hocus Pocus, and then there was an all-new original story as well in it. Unfortunately, I did not like the Hocus Pocus sequel at all. I felt like it completely trivialized everything good about the Hocus Pocus movie, so I'm content to keep that as like my golden tier of Halloween movies and nothing else. I also grew up on Disney Channel original movies that were Halloween themed, so of course there is Halloween Town. I literally watch Halloween Town like not in Halloween. I watch it in like the summer, the fall, it doesn't matter. It is just always a feel-good movie for me. I just feel like when you think of like what a town called Halloween Town would be like, it is what is actually in the movie, like the creatures, the dynamics, again the whole ambiance of all three of the films. The fourth one is fine, but they recasted Marnie, so it will always be below the original trilogy. Another classic favorite of mine is Twitches. Like, I literally remember being a kid and having these movies, like, come out and be excited and, like, watching them when they premiere on Disney Channel for the first time. I've always been a huge fan of Tia and Tamara. I recently rewatched Sister Sister, and that is just another thing that totally holds up over the years. I remember wanting to be a witch like in Twitches just so bad. I would like open my closet and I would just want it to be the doorway to Coventry. And I idolized all of these Disney stars when I was younger. So just like the characters of Alex and Cameron were just so cool to me. And I just loved their twin dynamic. It was It's just always fun and feel good. Those are just all my thoughts around the Disney Channel original movies. Another underrated favorite of mine though is Phantom of the Megaplex. I don't know why. I I've always just had such a soft spot for that film. Another feel-good spooky Halloween movie for me that I also rewatch like all year long is Coraline. I think I actually went to see Coraline in theaters and I've loved it ever since. I just think the animation of the film is brilliant. Coraline was just so relatable and cool as a kid. That's another Halloween costume that I've wanted to do for a very long time so maybe I'll get to that eventually. And I've always loved how it balanced that like light spooky Halloween feel with the actual darkness of the film and that's just really showcased through all of the art. Now I've never actually read the book Coraline by Neil Gaiman. I do know that there are like a lot of differences and I hear that the book is even darker but because it's a film that I've watched countless times and love so much I'd really like to get to the book at some point. I also wanted to talk about a couple of horror movies that I like because I am a big horror movie fan. I watched a lot of scary movies when I was like younger, like a preteen or a teenager, and so a lot of my taste for horror movies comes from kind of like mid 2000s slasher films or like paranormal films. My go-to answer as my favorite horror movie of all time is always going to be The Strangers because that one just freaked me out so much as a child. I was excited when they did like a revamped sequel a few years later and it was enjoyable but like the first one will always hold a special place in my heart. 
Home invasions are one of my biggest fears, so I tend to gravitate towards horror films that sort of emulate that. But The Strangers is one that, like, you could say any time of day, anywhere, anytime, I'm ready to watch The Strangers. Two other horror films I saw in my youth that have really stuck with me over the years are One Missed Call, which is in, like, American adaptation of a Japanese film. That one freaked me out so much as a kid, and I remember I watching it at my friend's house, and her dad knew that we were watching a scary movie, and he came down, and we just screamed bloody murder. And also, I think I think it was maybe like my first cell phone ever. My ringtone was the ringtone from One Missed Call. And another one I kind of associate at that time is Dead Silence, which is a film about like puppets that come to life. I can't really pinpoint why Dead Silence has stuck with me so much over the years, but it was like very scary entertaining for me. Some more modern horror films that I've become a fan of are Jordan Peele's films Us and Get Out. I think I love the concept and the cleverness of Get Out more, but the horror factor of Us definitely freaked me out more. And I've loved going through like the endless videos and whatnot of different Easter eggs and connections and hidden meanings behind all of the different things in Jordan Peele's film, so I'm really excited to continue watching more horror from him. Just to name off like a couple other horror films I liked, I really liked Terrifier for some reason, another one where I just like, I feel like I can't tell sometimes why a horror movie stands out to me. As for TV shows, the first one I want to talk about is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I have loved Buffy again since I was very very young. I think I probably started watching Buffy like in the 2000s right around when it was ending and I've just constantly rewatched it over and over and over over the years. I can't count how many times I've seen Buffy. I fell so in love with these characters and their stories and growth over the years and I feel like a lot of people might shy away from it if they missed the hype when it was first coming out because it is older and it has like not amazing special effects which is representative of its time, but it's really a solid, solid show. A TV show I am obsessed with and currently watching, I'm actually currently rewatching like many of these, <laughs> is You. Now You is also not a Halloween specific show, but it takes place in fall, I believe, and it just definitely has that kind of like spooky time of year vibe. I think I watched the first episode of You when it first came out and premiered and then I was like, all right, well like I gotta read the book. I can't wait until next week to find out what happens. And I loved the book. It was such a fun reading experience. And then as the rest of the season came out, I was obsessed. And then I watched season two and I was obsessed. And now I'm on like, I think my third rewatch of You because I'm watching it with Jake and introducing it to him and he's really loving it. Many of you know that Hidden Bodies, the sequel to you, was one of my absolute like least favorite books of all time, and I'm actually pleasantly surprised with how they adapted it in season two. I feel like it is a pretty true adaptation. They kept in a lot of the core parts of it, but I think they just did the story so much better than it was written. I love the fact that like every character in this show is unlikable. Like by the end, you're not able to fully like or support anyone. And that just makes for a really interesting watching experience. And I honestly find the show hilarious. Like the writing and dry humor is so great because Joe, our main character, is a stalker and a murderer and he just has no self-awareness into his own self. And it's just, it's fascinating to watch unfold. I love you very much. I highly recommend it and I cannot wait for season three. Now, the next couple of shows on this list, I have not fully finished any of them. <laughs> Many of you know I'm not a big TV watcher in general and what happens to me a lot is as I'm getting into a show I can really really love it but I'll just fall out of interest in watching it and I'll never end up finishing it even if I really love the show. I guess the one I've watched the most of is of course American Horror Story. The seasons that I have watched are Murder House, Asylum, Coven, Freak Show, and 1984. I tried many of the other seasons and I just didn't really get into them but I'm determined to like eventually go back and finish all of American Horror Story. I feel like everyone's favorite is Coven. I really love Coven and it's totally on my top list but I 
loved 1984 so much and think it is my all-time favorite American Horror Story season. American Horror Story is just like a full experience to go through. It's so fascinating how where the story starts from the first episode is miles past where it ends. Another show where just so much happens and you really have to pay attention while watching, but the writing is very clever. Again, the filmography of it is really beautiful and the characters and casting are just always so interesting. As I began rewatching this show, I just recently found out that it was also made by the same producers of American Horror Story, and that is Scream Queens. I think I started season two of Scream Queens. I just don't remember finishing it, but I know I really liked season one. In this rewatch, I'm just realizing that it is like the perfect encapsulation of millennial humor. Like it is a really interesting blend of that classic horror slasher feel with comedy. It's definitely a little corny at times, but so entertaining. Another spooky show I really love is The Haunting of Hill House. Again, haven't finished it. Don't know why. I think like I've made it through the first like seven or so episodes and just when we get to the last few, I'm, I'm wanting to watch something else. I just think it's a really expertly filmed show, like all of the characters and the relationships between these family who has been through so much trauma and pain with each other. I've talked about a lot of like feel good spooky content, but if you're looking for something scary, like that's really gonna like chill you to your bones, I definitely recommend watching The Haunting of Hill House and maybe one day I'll finish it. So lastly, before I close out this video, I want to talk about some of my favorite spooky fall Halloween books. The first is Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo, and this story follows a girl who has the ability to see and interact with ghosts and she is recruited by one of the secret societies at Yale University in order to help them kind of like keep track, I guess, of all of the different magic and ancient rituals that they are doing. I'm absolutely devastated that I do not have the time to reread Ninth House this year because I was so in love with it last year and it was one of my absolute favorite reads. The atmosphere of this book is just unmatched and the writing is absolutely phenomenal. I think it is definitely my favorite Lee Bardugo book that I've read. It's definitely a dense book. This is one that took me a really long time to read and I had to continually go back and make sure that I was like fully understanding the story right, but it was totally worth taking my time with and if you haven't given Ninth House a chance yet, I highly recommend. If you're looking for a kind of slasher mystery thriller, I would recommend Final Girls by Riley Sager, and this book is kind of a take on the trope of the final girl who is the survivor at the end of a giant massacre in a horror movie. It follows these three girls that are all final girls from different tragedies, and things start to change for them when one of the final girls is killed and the others think they might be next. This one's not like my favorite book ever. I'm like not a big fan of Riley Sager personally, but Final Girl stands out to me because it was fun and entertaining. So if you're looking for a thriller that's like really gonna keep you engaged and want you to read it all the way through, I think Final Girls is a good one for this time of year. Another recommendation I have is of course an all-time favorite, Night Film by Marisha Pessel, and this follows a defamed journalist who is trying to clear his name by investigating the apparent suicide of the daughter of like an occult filmmaker that has made like some really deep dark films. This is a book where I didn't really connect to the characters in the way I did with like Ninth House for example, but the story itself is so compelling and it was impossible for me to put down. It's a novel told through mixed media, so as you are reading the book, you are coming across different like letters, emails, newspaper articles and web pages that all help tell the story. It's a favorite of mine and where this book starts is not where it ends. The twist is just super unexpected and interesting and it's one I will always recommend. Another go-to spooky wreck for me is of course The Diviners by Libba Bray. This is a 1920s historical paranormal fantasy 
that follows a group of people that all have very different supernatural powers. And so in each installment in the Diviner series, they deal with a different antagonist, like a main evil power that they are trying to fight. But in the first one, it is a ghost who is committing heinous murders all around New York City. The Diviners is an all-time favorite series of mine. Libba Bray is just such a brilliant writer in every sense of the word. Her atmosphere and historical influence is great, but something I really treasure about The Diviners is the characters individually watching their growth, but also their relationships, romances, friendships, and whole group dynamic is so rare to find in many other series. I think a lot of people stray away from the Diviners because they think it's so big, but really there's just so much content and story in it. Like every page of this book is important and serves a purpose. So if you're someone that likes a big series and is interested in things like paranormal, supernatural powers, it is one you definitely need to pick up. Another book that is sure to unsettle you is Wilder Girls by Rory Power. And this follows an all girls school on a remote island where there has been this plague and this thing in the air that is transforming all of the land and the creatures on it. So the girls are quarantined, haha, very timely, in their school and they're forced to break it when one of their members goes missing. Wilder Girls is not like a super super favorite of mine. There was just something about like the writing and the storytelling that turned me off a bit but I liked it enough that I really want to continue with Rory Powers' works, and I also really like it because there's some sapphic rep in this book of, like, girls who like girls, and that's not something you come across really in, like, YA horror. So I did really enjoy it. I love this cover, and I think it's one to put on your radar. Lastly, I have some middle grade books I would like to recommend, the first being The Chronicles of Vladimir Todd, which is actually a series that kind of transitions from middle grade to young adult, and it follows a young boy who is half human, half vampire. I read the series for the first time in high school and then I reread it a couple of years later and it is just like such a comfort story for me. The characters and plot are very special to me and it's just got this very interesting like angsty goth vibe that I feel like if that speaks to you, The Chronicles of Vladimir Todd is one you should definitely check out. And my last recommendation is The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding by Alexandra Bracken and this is the story about a boy who finds out that he has a demon living inside of him because his great 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 grandfather made a deal with the demon and double crossed them so now the demon is back to exact revenge on his family. If you're a fan of Halloween Town, which I was talking about before, this is definitely a book you are going to want to give a chance. It has many of the same similar vibes and it just all around has this good, feel good, whimsical, fall, paranormal, spooky vibe to it. There is a sequel that I unfortunately have not gotten to and I feel like every October I'm like, I'm gonna finish this duology because I really liked the first book and I haven't gotten around to it yet, but at some point I would really like to finish this series and it's one I would definitely recommend if you're looking for something fun and lighthearted during the Halloween season. So that concludes today's video on all things Halloween. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you are interested in diving into some more spooky content during this season, definitely check out The Haunting of Beatrix Green, which is now available on Cereal Box, and you can get 50% off your first Cereal Box story using the code Emma Cereal Box. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you soon for a new one. Bye!